All right, so it is time to get into 2.3 so you can finish up that section, 21223. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so here we go. All right, 2.3 is talking about slopes and different types of slopes and different uh, ideas about slope. So let's talk about, let's just in general, let's look at slope. So slope is how a line rises or it falls. Okay, and how quickly it does. Okay, so in this one, as you see, this one kind of rises quickly. You might have something that kind of rises slowly. That's a difference in slope. Okay, so now the thing is, something like this is what we consider a positive slope. Okay, it goes left to right going up. It's increasing. Okay, this is considered a negative slope. Okay. Now, their numbers itself might be the same, except one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative when I count it on a grid. Okay. Horizontal lines, horizontal lines are considered to have a slope that's equal to zero. Okay. And then the vertical line is called an undefined slope. Okay. Now, when we talk about steepness, Okay, steepness can be the same for both a negative and a positive slope. Okay, these two have the, kind of the same steepness. Okay, they're pretty close. Slope of zero has no steepness, and the undefined would have an undefined steepness, which means you just wouldn't be able to do anything on it. Okay, so the letter we use for slope is M. Okay, you might have a slope of four over three. That's a positive slope. You might have a slope of negative one half. That's a negative slope. I have a slope of zero. Okay. So when we find a slope of zero, it's going to be zero over some number. That's horizontal. But if you happen to find a slope of some number over zero, remember that's not allowed. You cannot divide by zero. That's your undefined slope. Okay. So those are different things that we have to deal with. Okay. As we talk about slope. All right, so how do I find slope from two points? In other words, if I give you this line and I give you this uh, point and this point, how do I find its slope? Well, one of the things they talk about is rise over run. The rise over run is how much this, going from this point to this point, how much you have to go up and then over. This is your rise, this is your run. Okay, and so you have a slope that's usually two numbers or a whole number. Okay, it's always rational. Okay, so it can either be a fraction or it can be a whole number or zero or undefined. Okay, so that's one way from a graph. Just count up and count over. Okay, uh, a slope of four thirds would be up four over to the right three. A negative one half might be a down one to the right three. Okay, and we can use graph paper to do something like that. If I gave a chart here, and let's say you had a point here, and you had a point here. First of all, if that's a line, there's our line, and we want to find the slope of that. All right, well, easiest thing to do is rise over run from a picture. Okay, and what we would do is, first of all, can you tell me if it's going this way, we know it's a negative slope. So my slope right now is just going to be negative. And if you knock that out right off the bat, it helps. Now, how do I find the other numbers? Okay, so what we're going to do is count from here, go rise, one, two, three. So the rise is three over two. So that has a slope of negative three over two. Yep. So that's how you get it from a graph. Now, what about finding slope from points? Okay, you have this formula. Okay, it's m is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Now, same idea. We have to have an x1 and a y1 point and an x2 and a y2 point. 
kind of like we did distance, remember distance and midpoint on the last video. Okay, so we're using those kind of same ideas. Okay, slope is known as we said rise over run. It's also known as the change of y over the change of x. When we say change, we subtract the numbers. Okay, you might even see this in different classes. That means the triangle means change, the change of y over the change of x. Different terminology with it. All right, but it's actually a pretty easy concept. You don't, again, it's another formula you don't have to memorize. It's on the formula chart. Okay, or I'll give it to you on a test. You know, who knows? We'll figure a way to give you the formula. All right, so here's a point. I want to find the slope of A to B. So this is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. And to find the slope, we simply take the y2 minus the y1 over x2 minus x1. Don't forget, two negatives give me a positive. That gives me 10. Two negatives give me a positive, gives me 8. So that will reduce to a slope of 5 over 4. And that's a positive slope. So in essence, if I start at a point, I'd go up 5 over 4. So up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops. One, two, three, four. Yep, you did that right. And there's your line. From one point to another. Okay, now that's not those points there. That's just how you count slope. So let's do one more. Here's my slope. So I'm going to take the change of x or y. So negative 1 minus a negative 7 over negative 8 minus 4 which would be 6 over negative 12. So it's a slope of negative 1 half. Now that negative can either be negative 1 over 2, which would be down 2, or down 1 to the right 2. Or I could do 1 over negative 2 equals the same thing, which would be up 1 to the left 2. Either way, you get to the same spot. Okay, So it doesn't matter which way you count it. All right, so that's slope from points, okay? Now we want to talk about another phrase that basically means the same thing. It's the rate of change. Rate of change is the change of a certain unit over change of another unit, like miles per hour, gallons per second, okay? A lot of times the hour is on the bottom, okay? Time is usually almost always on the bottom, but we can find its rate of change. Now, that would be the same as saying the change of some unit over the change of a different unit. Maybe miles per hours. Okay, something like that. Okay, now this is an example out of the book. I kind of sketched it real fast. It's a skier. The skier wants to know, and I don't make my ski very good, but here's my skier going down. And they want to know the rate of change of the slope of the ski slope and basically they give you where you start here's the time at zero and how high they're starting that's your y and that's my x so this would be in 25 seconds they're this high up so notice it's going down so the skier starts at the top and gets to this point so to find its rate of change we take the change of y over the change of x. Okay, so when I subtract those two, you're gonna get what? Eight five zero zero minus 12. That's gonna be negative 3,500. Divide that by 25, and it goes in evenly. It's gonna have a rate of change of negative 400 feet per second or minute or whatever the time is. I don't remember what they had the time in there. If that's second and this is feet, 
That's 400 feet per second. Or 140 feet per second. Now, what's the negative mean? The negative means it's going down that fast. Directional. The, neg the negative sign is a directional. All right. So here's a couple other ideas here. Let's take to find the slope again. We're going to take x1, y1, x2, y2, and we're going to find our slope. So a little more practice. We're going to go negative 4 minus negative 4 over 6 minus 3. So remember, two negatives can be a positive. So negative 4 plus 4 is 0 all over 3. So notice I have a slope of 0 of 3 or a slope of 0. This means these two, this line, whatever, however you were to graph it, should be horizontal. Okay. Well, if you were to graph it, you would have a point at 3, negative 4, 3, negative 4, and 6, negative 4. And notice it's horizontal. Now, what's my equation? We learned some stuff about horizontal equations the other day. They are y is equal to some number. How do I figure out what number that is? It's the one they share that's the same, negative 4. Okay. So let's look at the next one. Again, x1, y1, x2, y2. So we'll find our slope. It's going to be 4 minus 8 over 6 minus 6, which is going to be negative 4 over 0, which is undefined. Which means this has an undefined slope, or it's vertical. It's a vertical line. And it's going to be x is equal to, and what number do they repeat? The 6s. Is, x is equal to 6. And if you were to graph these two points, you would see they're right on top of each other. It's a vertical line. And that's how we tell the difference between horizontal and vertical lines and slope. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about, we don't have a lot here, but we're going to talk about parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Okay, so we should know that parallel lines look something like this. Those are parallel lines. Okay, well, what does that mean about their slope? Well, in parallel lines, they're going to have equal slopes okay so if m is parallel to n that means the slope of m should be equal to the slope of line n okay so if i have if i say i have parallel lines and uh, slope k K has a slope of 3, and K is parallel to L, then L would have a slope of 3. They have to be the same. All right? So that's parallel lines. They have to have equal slopes. I want you to be able to recognize equal slopes. When we talk about more equations, we'll know a little bit more about that. Now, perpendicular lines. Now, perpendicular line, definition of perpendicular line is here I have a line, say L, and then I have line K. If we are saying they are perpendicular, they must be at a right angle. If I have a right angle, that would mean K is perpendicular to L. That's the symbol for perpendicular. Okay. You have to recognize that symbol. Okay. Now, not notice they do not have the same slopes. Okay. So, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. Now, what does opposite mean? means opposite sign, one's positive, the other one's negative. Reciprocals are flip, a flip of a fraction. So 9 over, or 
7 over 3, the reciprocal, that's 3 over 7. Okay, so to be perpendicular, they have to both be opposite and reciprocals. Give you an example. If uh, line B is parallel to line C and B has a slope of one third, then C would have a slope of flip it, three over one, and a negative. Opposite and the reciprocal. Okay, so what happens if I say, okay, state the perpendicular slope, and over here, state the parallel slope. All right. So let's say my slope that I'm going to start with is two thirds. Its parallel slope would be two thirds. Its perpendicular slope would be negative three over two. Yeah. Let's say my slope is negative uh, one six. Well, parallel slope would be negative one six. Perpendicular, flip it and change the sign to be six over one or just six. Okay, now your slopes are always in this kind of form. Okay, so if I said my slope is six over 15, that actually reduces to two over five, which means my parallel slope would be two fifths. And my perpendicular slope would be negative five over two. Now let's say I have a slope of zero. A line that's parallel to that would also have a slope of zero. But what would the perpendicular line have a slope of? What would be perpendicular to zero? You can't flip that. Now don't forget, slope of zero would mean it is horizontal. Well, what's perpendicular to a horizontal? Vertical. So what you're looking for is vertical, which would mean if this is zero, this would be an undefined slope and then they're perpendicular to each other, okay? So I hope this helps in this section. It's kind of a short section, but I think this is kind of helpful for you. Look at the examples also in your e-text, okay? I think that will help a whole lot also. All right, well, good luck with this section.